Hey everybody, this is Wargamer Sean. I'm here. I I didn't get my video made as soon as I wanted to, but uh, I'm uh, getting it out on Sunday night. Um, uh, it's the 14th of February, 2016, and I did pick up my copy on Friday of the Curse of the Wolfen, um, and uh, did get a pack of the Wolfen. Uh, I know some people don't like them. I I they're interesting. I, I'm not necessarily saying they're my favorite model, but I, I, I like them. Um, I've kind of always liked the Wolfen. Um, I'm going to do a review of the, the code, or the, well, I guess the supplement, um, or the um, campaign, I guess. Um, but I wanted to talk first about, um, and I'm already behind on reviewing some of the other <laughs> codices and supplements. I apologize for that. Um, but I wanted to talk today about um, something that I think has been kind of coming or hinted at for a while and something that another video, um, who's a member of the Legion of Gamza, um, mammoth studio painting, um, had brought up the kind of end of times. Um, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's end of times. Well, in some way I, uh, I but I think that they're they're definitely going to be advancing the fluff or changing the story or, you know, uh, doing some drastic changes, I think, over the next – my guess would be over the next, I don't know, six months to maybe a year or two. Um, and, and the reason I say this, I'm going to talk about those points um, and uh, – and, and say why I think that's the case, especially with this new book, because um, it definitely uh, does some pretty significant changes that I think they're going to have to address. Um, and um, you know, it's going to uh, it's going to change the fluff uh, to a very degree. Maybe even a new edition potentially coming out. I, I hope not. I kind of like seventh edition, and um, I'd like them to update some of the codexes but i think some of them the way they're updating them with the chaos demons i think they're just doing this supplement to kind of replace or change some of the rules or add some new formations and stuff i don't think they're going to replace the codex anytime soon which is a little disappointing um but i'm getting off track here um first of all i know some people will say oh they're not going to advance the fluff it's never changed since 40k started and, and let me start off by this um I, I guess I'm kind of an old fart, but I've been playing um, since Rogue Trader came out. I remember when it came out. I, I used to play before uh, 40K came out. I used to play a game that some of you might not have heard, of, but some of you have. is called Battletech. Um, and that was my first uh, kind of miniature game and strategy game that I played on a tabletop. And that's really what got me into strategy gaming. I st still love that game. I just don't have a lot of time to play it anymore. And it's not as popular as it used to be um, since FASA doesn't exist anymore. Um, anyway, um, I've had the first Rogue Trader. I remember getting my hands on it. I remember going to a con, a convention. It was called Platicon. Uh, which was in Platteville, Wisconsin. Um, I don't know if it still exists anymore. I think it still goes on. Um, but uh, put, up, put on by the gaming group that was at the college there every year. And I remember going there in high school. Um, it was my first convention. It was pretty exciting. And uh, I remember when 40K came out, or well, it was Rogue Trader. I remember how interesting it was because it was kind of like, oh, it's their fantasy and they're and they're doing it in science fiction. And it kind of initially it was kind of like, oh, this is kind of a joke. And I don't think they even knew how well it was going to go over. You know, it was kind of like you got your Eldar, your space elves, you got your squats, which are your dwarves, and you got your orcs, and you got your, you know, you got your humans. Um, at the time, um, you know, humans and uh and Eldar could interbreed and have half like half elves basically or half Eldar. And that was actually in Rogue Trader it does you know, if you want me at some point to find the page and read it I can, but it was actually in the fluff. Now that's changed since um you know, now supposedly the Eldar take many cycles to breed and they can't interbreed with humans who they call monkeys uh, or monkeys um, what i'm getting at or what my point is because i know i'm kind of beating around the bush is that the fluff has changed already through the years um, they've obviously done some major changes uh, to the fluff over the years people say you know they, the fluff has never advanced it's never changed a few minor things have changed but otherwise nothing like you know they killed off the squats <laughs> um but i i, I I argue that a lot of things have changed majorly. Um, my first point, I mean, obviously the Eldar and humans interbreeding is a minor thing, but um, the biggest thing I think that would shake a lot of people's 
faith in the fluff or, or whatever, is the Emperor of Mankind was in there, and he had kind of lived through the ages, but they had the legions, um, but the, you know, some of the legions, like now, like the, um, you know, the flesh terrors or were an, it, their own chapter. They weren't like a, you know, a subsequent group of the, the, um, blood angels. Um, you know, they were their own, you know, like first founding chapter, which might surprise some of you guys. And some of the first founding chapters weren't even in rogue trader. Um, and, um, the Horus heresy, um, and Horus is not in the rogue trader, the original rogue trader. The emperor kind of stops crusading and he gets old and he gets, you know, ends up in the golden throne. But it was, he wasn't put there by Horus. He was, didn't lose a fight. He didn't get mortally wounded. He just ended up there because he got old, even though he could live for a long time, eventually got really old and he couldn't. Um, so a major change in the fluff is Horus and the Horus heresy and what happened there. Now that came pretty quickly um, in the White Dwarfs and in second edition. And so a lot of people don't remember it. Um, but, you know, if you look at your old Rogue Trader, um, the original one, I don't, I don't know if subsequent printings, I know they did, I know they did a second kind of printing of it and, and paperback edition. I have the hard book. Um, you know, I don't think they changed it, but I mean, they could have um, changed the fluff as time went on and the White Dwarfs came out. You know, it, at one time, the White Dwarfs weren't just kind of a, an, well, they still were, but I mean, they weren't just an advertisement for their models and their miniatures and their games, but they actually put um, new fluff and new scenarios and new rules in there. And that's how they actually introduced, um, the, before codexes kind of existed um, originally, how you'd get your codex was usually in two issues. You'd get the first one that mentioned the troops, and the next issue would have like the war gear and the points so you could build your army. And so they were kind of spread over two months. But, you know, my first um, Orc Codex and Eldar Codex and, you know, all of that and Harlequins, that all came out in White Dwarfs and... Um, that's how you collected it. There wasn't a codex. There, were, there was no codex at the time. Second edition kind of introduced the codices and the codexes, and that's when they started coming out in the paperback um, books, and they would be usually combos. Like I have the original like uh, Angels uh, codex for the head Dark Angels and half of it, and the other half was Blood Angels. And that's where you first learn about Lynn Al Johnson and how he's in the rock and, uh, you know, asleep but they don't know he's down there in stasis um and the watchers and stuff like that but that wasn't in the original rogue trader now the dark angels were in there um their colors were different they weren't green they were black um and uh you know the uh terminators didn't exist then uh, squats had exo armor which they made into terminator armor later on the terminator armor actually came out uh when they came out with space hulk originally that's the only way you could get them originally too um so uh, anyway, I know I'm kind of like not talking about end times here, but I'm trying to give you kind of like some evidence or support that things have changed through the years. They haven't remained stagnant. Um, and uh, I think they're really heading to some major changes here. Now, I'm not um, in any way insinuating, insinuating that they're going to do what they did with Age of Sig or well, with, uh, you know, um, fantasy and become age of Sigmar. I, I think honestly, and if you really look at it, I think, you know, they realized that fantasy wasn't doing that well. It wasn't, I'm sorry for the people that play fantasy and were big fans of fantasy, but fantasy as a game for them wasn't doing well. And I think they need, they realized they need to either cut it or reboot the system. And I think that's what they did with age of Sigmar, whether or not it pans out or works. I don't know. No, I really don't think, their major game, which is, um, you know, Warhammer 40k right now, I don't think they're going to change that and ruin it because they've got their cash cow. They're not going to ruin it. And they're even cashing in on it more with 30k and Horus Heresy um, with Forge World. So I'm not insinuating at all that they're going to end it and it's going to become, 40k is going to become Age of Sigmar or Age of Sigmar Rise. I'm not saying that at all. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't necessarily think there's going to be an end times like there was in fantasy where things just end and everything start over again. I don't think that this is going to happen, but um, I do think because they realize that the 
um, end times for fantasy sold really well when they when they did it. Um, I think they're realizing that hey, we can do something in advance of fluff here and sell more stuff, sell more models, sell more things, and it kind of advanced the plot line. Um, now I'm going to get into the meat and potatoes of it. Reasons why I think that they're advancing the plot. Um, the first inclination I kind of had of of it uh, were in some of the um, even sixth edition. Um, Eldar Codex, uh, some of the fluff part of it, and even uh, the I end in supplement, but then also in some of the novels, of Har you know, like um, the Eldar novels and um, the uh, um, uh, supplement that came out it, that had, um, um, uh, shoot, um, I end in and uh, the Dark Eldar Harlequins working together against Tyranids. Um, uh, the, uh, Sorry, uh, Valador. Sorry, um, I think it was the supplement. Sorry, I'm gonna look quick because I can try to remember. Yes, it is. Sorry, it is Valador. Um, anyway, there was a novel with that, and it was a really good novel if you haven't read it. Um, but um, in it, uh, they kind of hinted some things, and at the end of the novel, um, you think that. Uh, um, Prince Uriel's going to die because the uh, Spirit of Twilight's going like, to take his soul and kind of he's kind of at that point where he's ready to kind of be done and give up and he goes to kind of hang up the spear um, in his because uh, he's the last ascendant, descendant um, of, of that house um, and he's the only one that can really wield it and one of the Harlequin um, Shadow Seers goes in there and says hey you know your time's not done and basically kind of takes him off to you know, kind of they hinted at that he's going to fight the Ronadondra that's coming up. Um, and on the other things like in the Harlequin Codex and some of the Harlequin stuff that's come out, they talk about that in the Black Library, um, Segarak's book or the great, the Laughing God's book was closed with like psychic um, threads and silk. And as it got closer to end times, they were unraveling or disappearing. And now it says in the Harlequin Codex that it's suddenly flung open and opened up and there's something in there that says there's a way that they could actually – the race isn't going to die, but there's a way to potentially save it. And Selenesh could be potentially used to basically relight or, or kind of restart or – you know, uh, renew the Eldar race, but in a, you know, similar jest to the laughing God, he doesn't really say how to do it. Uh, so the Harlequins are trying to figure this out. Um, they also kind of, the Harlequins have also changed their dance, um, their, uh, dance of the end times. And they've kind of started to include you need, uh, which, uh, first came out in the third edition, um, Eldar, um, uh, craft world supplement where, um, um, which also has has changed because Eldrad, all the way up until this edition, has always been died. He lived for a long time, but he died, and you were always playing with like a dead guy because um, his soul got stuck in um, one of the uh, vessels um, that uh, Abaddon's crusade was trying to capture, and uh, he ended up encountering Slanash and his you know got sucked in there but they've kind of redacted that and he's now still alive um anyway he's the one that first kind of explains that he believes in you need which is the god of the dead for the eldar who is coming to life by all the souls that are being put in the infinity circuits throughout the craft worlds and that's kind of fueling or feeding or making um you need and they've started including him in their dance of the uh, you know the, the final dance for harlequins um so you know that's something that's definitely changed through the years um the uh, the big thing um you know there have been some other subtle things but the big thing in this um this new campaign supplement the curse of the wolf in which i'm really excited about i a lot of people don't read the fluff book a lot of people look at the rules and i looked at the rules too and there's some neat rules and like i said i'll be reviewing them but the cool thing in the fluff and i've, I've always been kind of a fluff person is um they kind of go through this story about um how um they end up encountering the um the wolfen they don't realize right away who they are and then they realize the wolfen kind of recognizes that they're brethren and they they kind of take them back on under guard because they don't trust these guys and um and uh the uh commander of the lord of the that uh group um uh, basically uh harold um 
Harris or Harold, shoot, um, Dark Wolf or I'm sorry, I apologize. It's uh, one of the HQs. Harold, he's on a Thunder Wolf. Um, he's in charge of that group, and he encounters them, and the they even name one of the Wolfen, but they basically say, hey, there's more of them coming through the warp, and they what they end up encountering was this warp incursion that they investigated, and um, they got the distress call to go help this world and they collect these guys and they just take off. They don't finish cleansing the world, which, uh, of course alerts the, uh, green Knights Cause they're like, well, why didn't they help cleanse the world? Why they take off, um, what's going on. And, um, and they end up finding a, Oh, like a wolf in body that they see has the unmistakable plate of, um, space wolves on it. And then the other thing is, um, the dark angels, um, they've hidden some um, chaos blades that they kind of used in their fall, and they didn't want to store it on the rocks, so they stored it on this planet that got invaded. And uh, luckily it was safe, but the scouts that were there to guard it were all massacred and clawed by these, what looked like this quick video that they had was like something wearing space wolf armor that looked like a wolf and a werewolf, like a mutant. Um, and they wanted to hold them accountable, but they kind of wanted to investigate, so they didn't want to accuse their brothers of something, because, you know, there's already bad blood between Dark Angels and, uh, and, uh, Space Wolves. Um, and then, um, the, the, they end up finding more of the Wolfen, and, um, Samael ends up going to kind of capture these guys, and, bring them in and the space was like, yeah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna listen to you. We'll, we'll fight you for it. And, uh, then the chaos attacks, um, and the wolves just, the space wolves take off with them and leave Sam Al, who, who ends up surviving, but he's kind of pissed that the space wolves don't help him. And, uh, they've kind of got their last piece to kind of prove that the wolves, uh, are kind of doing something heretical and have, you know, mutants that they're harboring that they won't give up for the Inquisition. Um, and the Grey Knights end up uh, kind of uh, catching up to them. Um, uh, Captain Stern, I believe. And he confronts them, and they're not going to give them up. But then they figure out that there's uh, warp um, gates opening up and attacking um, the system of Fenris and all the worlds there, the moons and the worlds and um, Fenris itself. And so they kind of rush back, and they convince the you know, Grey Knights, why don't you help us out and we can deal with this afterwards. And um, they go there and there's just a huge incursion. And as they're kind of looking at it, they, um, they're they wondering, you know, is it wolf, w w sorry, worth uh, harboring these wolf and, and the uh, kind of head chaplain guy, um, their priest, uh, he says, you know, I know that this is going to herald the return of their Primarch, Lehman Ross. And so Logan Grimnar like trusts him and is like, hey, we're going to keep these guys. Um, and so they're fighting to kind of save their planets. And um, all of a sudden, um, the uh, um, Dark Angels and the Ultramarines and like 12 other chapters appear, including most of the vessels from the Dark Angels. But not only that, but the rock itself appears out of hyperspace over Fenris. And um, basically they decide to... They see that there's a big demon incursion throughout all the worlds, and they decided just to start opening fire, basically exterminatus on all the planets and destroying the Fang and Fenris and the wolves, and all these chapters start firing on it. And that's the end of the um, the book, is they're opening fire on the planet, and uh, the Space Wolves can't really believe that's happening. Um, you also get a glimpse that... Um, one of the scouts had survived from way back in the Dark Angels, and he disappeared from the med bay, and they couldn't find him. And it turns out that um, on the bridge, uh, one of the officers has been kind of taken over by the changeling, um, you know, basically the Zinch changeling, and he's kind of been manipulating. He was the scout, or he wasn't really the scout, but they thought he was a scout, but it was a changeling, and he's been hopping bodies, kind of like trying to get different places and kind of manipulating the Dark Angels, and he's kind of smiling and almost laughs when like they order to open fire. So, you know, he's kind of manipulating it too, um, which is interesting. So, you know, I'm sure they'll figure it out um, or hopefully they will. Um, the other thing, um, and I'm pretty sure, I think I forgot to talk about it, but the, um, the space wolves realized too, that the pattern of where these warp incursions were causing was in the shape of a symbol that um, basically, 
represented vengeance from from uh that was a language used in prospero so basically the thousand sons were like claiming vengeance for what they did to prospero the space wolves um so whether the thousand sons are solely responsible for this is, or if this is zinch i don't know they don't really fully explain the thousand sons never really show up uh there is an incursion that costs dearly in lives uh, for the Space Wolves. Um, they take over one of the command places on one of the uh, worlds, and that's taken over by um, the Alpha Legion. And they kind of talk about that they've got reasons for doing this, and they are doing what they're doing. Um, they're doing it for an ulterior motive, but you don't really know what that is. But, you know, Alpha Legions are so kind of sneaky, and, you know, you don't really know what's going on. <laughs> um, so... At the end, you kind of have, um, you know, Fen Fenris uh, system getting attacked by the Dark Angels and Ultramarines and stuff. That's pretty big. I mean, that's a pretty big advancement. I mean, they're attacking and basically setting out to destroy Space Wolves, which is one of the major chapters, founding, you know, first founding chapters, um, legions of, of the Space Marines. They're not... You know, GW is not going to get rid of Space Wolves. They've invested a lot. They've just made new models um, and replaced some of their old models, the Tech Marine and, and that um, Priest, but then they made the Wolf in. And, uh, you know, they're not going to get rid of the Space Wolves. So obviously something's going to happen to either stop this or something's going to happen where they're still going to exist, obviously. Now, oops, sorry. I hit my uh, computer there. My theory on this, or hypothesis, I guess I should say, is... Um, that the next book or when they actually address this further, I think what's going to happen is um, two things. I think that a certain someone is going to wake up or be woken up by the watchers and Lionel Johnson is going to come back and hopefully find the changeling and stop it and maybe put a stop to the exterminatus that's going on on Fenris. And I think that uh, the Primarch um, Lehman Russ is going to come back and hopefully they're going to settle their differences to kind of put a, to realize that they're gonna have to fight chaos and put an end, and, you know, put aside their differences. Um, but I think they're gonna come back. I think this is kind of like their way of bringing some of the Primarchs back, which is pretty cool. Um, who knows? I mean, the Ultramarines are involved. Maybe some a certain Primarch that's in stasis that's supposedly been kind of healing is gonna come back. You know, Robert uh, Gilliman is is he gonna come back? You know, um, it's interesting. Uh, I think you know we're gonna start to see some of these things start to kind of take shape, and we know that the um, Salamanders have found almost uh, all of their things that they need to find. Um, I think they're down to the last of the eight things they need to find to, to before supposedly Vulcan Heston is going to come back. Um, so, you know, I think it's kind of a, I hate to say end times, but I mean, maybe time advancement or time change where there's going to be big things changing. Um, you know, who knows how far they're going to push it. Is the Ronadondra going to take place? Is Slanesh going to be ended? Um are the Eldar going to be saved? Is, you know, what's going to happen? Is is the Emperor going to finally die? You know, who knows? Um, I don't know if they'll ever kill the Emperor off. I mean, it'd be kind of neat if they didn't see what happens afterwards. But um, who knows what's going to happen with that? But I'm excited. I mean, I, I know some people think about this and they think, oh, nothing's going to change. And some people are like, oh, this scares the crap. I mean, I don't want them to do something like Age of Sigma. I really don't think that's going to happen. I, this is their cash cow. They're not going to ruin it. Um, you know, so people kind of calm down, but what I think should be exciting is, um, you know, there's going to be kind of a, a change, a big change in the fluff that, you know, things have changed through the years, like I pointed out earlier, but this is a major, you know, change that could potentially have lasting effects, you know, going forward with the game, which it really excites me. I'm excited about this. I think it's going to be a cool thing. Um, you know, I look, I look forward to it. Um. So I'm 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 curious to see what happens. You know, are some of the Primarchs that are Demon Princes now going to come back and fight Primarch versus Primarch? That'd be kind of cool. You know, is Magnus the Red going to come out of the the warp and do something, or you know, is um, whoever survived uh, Omega or Alpharius, you know, they going to do something with the uh, you know Alpha Legion? Um, you know, be be kind of cool. I mean, there's still Primarchs out there. You know. Um, and I think it'd be kind of cool to see them come back and, and have them, wouldn't it be cool to have them in 40K again, you know? I mean, hell, the game's already OP enough, you know? Why not have a Primark in there, right? <laughs> um, anyway, I think it'd be cool. I'm excited about it personally. I, I hope you guys are too, maybe not. But uh, I really think that this is going to kind of a sign of things changing 
I hate to say kind of end times to it. I don't know if it's, it's not really end times. I don't think they're going to end the universe, the 40 K universe. I think it's just going to be an advancement of time, but I'm really excited about it. I think, I think that, you know, I'm excited. I want to see what happens. I'm, I'm jazz. I'm out, almost more jazz than I am about seeing what new codex comes out and what new kind of, excuse me, excuse me, the non-PC, but like full retard they're going to bring out and stuff, like some of the game-breaking stuff they're coming out with, because I like the game. I'll never stop playing 40K. I, I love it. Um, uh, I have It has been a little hard sometimes uh, recently um, in the later parts of 7th edition where they've come out with some things where some of these codexes are just so powerful right now that there's just so much more powerful than all the other codexes that there's the the distinction um the 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 codex creep is so much bigger right now and i think it also has kind of put a bigger divide between casual gamer versus competitive gamer and uh you know some of the cheeses out there and so i, I i'll always get the new codexes i'm excited about i'm excited about new models and stuff but right now, like the fluff is really exciting me, and I'm kind of really excited to see what they do to kind of advance that. So, anyway, I thought I would share my thoughts, uh, see what you guys think. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments below, or you think, hey, you're you're, you're loco, you're crazy, nothing's gonna change, you know, put it down here. Say say what you. I'm I'm you know I'm willing to you know talk about it and debate about it in a friendly way. I mean, I'm not I'm not gonna be offended if you don't agree with me. Um, you know, I think uh, you know, this is something to talk about, and we don't know yet. You know, we know it's going to happen, but something's definitely going to change because I can't leave um, Fenris getting bombarded. You know, something's got to change there. <laughs> something's going to happen. So, um, until next time, you guys keep on war game, keep on uh, hobbying and painting, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Goodbye. 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 Bye bye. Goodbye. See ya. Bye for now. Bye for now. Goodbye. I like bottoms.